If you own an airsoft gun, sooner or later you're going to get into the situation where you're going to show up at the range, go to use your gun, and nothing happens when you pull the trigger. Well, don't panic. There's a lot of very simple things that you can go through to figure out what's going wrong with your gun and get it back up and running again. Um, and we're going to go through those things today. So today's video is troubleshooting 101 for airsoft guns. One common problem with all airsoft guns that you may not be aware of is occasionally they tend to short cycle where you'll be firing the gun very rapidly in semi-automatic and eventually it, the gearbox will not cycle all the way through and reset itself and it'll just sort of jam halfway between shots where you'll be pulling the trigger and nothing's happening. The easiest way to clear that problem is to just set it to fully automatic, shoot a quick burst, allow the gearbox to reset itself and then go back to shooting semi-automatic. Now some of the times uh, the cause for that problem is having a battery that doesn't have enough of a charge on it that it doesn't allow the gearbox to fully cycle either so if you consistently get that sort of problem it might be a good sign that it's time to get a fresh battery for your gun um, but for probably more times than you're aware of just setting it back to fully automatic shooting a quick burst and then going back to semi-automatic does fix a lot of problems all right, once you've established that nothing's happening when you're pulling the trigger and obviously the safety is off, uh, the best bet is to start with what is the most basic solution to the problem, which is the battery. So go ahead and try replacing the battery with a battery that you know works. Um, I have seen situations where people have had multiple dead batteries and they tried them all and obviously um, had a problem with the batteries and not the gun. So double check that your batteries are not the problem, but try another one. If that doesn't fix the problem, then go to step two. One common problem with Tamiya connectors is after being plugged and unplugged so many thousand times, eventually the terminals begin to disengage from the outer plastic connector. Um, it gets to the point where you may plug the battery in and it may feel like it's making a solid connection, but the inner terminal is not connecting with the battery and you're just not getting a solid electric flow going into the gun. So just double check to make sure that the terminals are solidly plugged into the Tamiya connector and that you are getting a good solid connection with your battery. The next potential problem that you may have with an airsoft gun is the fuse. Now a lot of times when you take the fuse out of the gun it may look visually like it's getting a good solid connection in there but I've seen quite often where these just get rattled around to the point where they just begin to uh, get breaks on the inside of them and they're not necessarily um, allowing your electric to pass through so uh, best bet with a fuse is just go ahead and try replacing it with a fresh one and see if that makes any difference. The next potential problems that you can troubleshoot all sort of revolve around things that can happen with your motor. Um, one common issue that I see occasionally is that the motor height will be off just from the vibration of the gun or just from wear and tear. Eventually the motor height needs to be adjusted. One of the easiest ways to find out if your motor height is like jammed too far in the gun is just pull the trigger with the battery in and hear, you know, listen to see if you can hear the motor making any noise. If it's dead silent, then you're probably not dealing with a motor height issue, but if you can hear the motor humming, you you may want to try backing off the motor height adjustment. That would be the central screw in the middle of the grip. Simply back that out and if you, suddenly the motor begins to work, that fixes your problem, obviously. If that does not fix the problem, the next thing you may want to do is to go ahead and remove the butt plate from the gun. Now there are situations where you may back the motor out and the motor spins and you go to put the motor back in and it still jams. If that's the case, that's a good sign that there's probably some larger problems going on in your gearbox that you may have a stripped out gear. So you know the motor works, but once you re-engage it with the gearbox, it continues to jam up. That's a, a pretty good sign that you need to go consult with somebody about uh, getting the internal parts of your gearbox fixed. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and remove the plate, the floor plate from the grip and take a look at the motor. All right, once you've removed the floor plate from the grip, you want to just check to make sure that the wires are solidly connected to the motor. It's quite often that these little connections, these little spade connectors will vibrate off of the motor and all you simply have to do is just reconnect it to the motor and then reassemble the gun. So if you can visually see that one of the connectors is off of the motor, just simply reconnect it, reassemble it and try again. 
All right, so you've determined that the connections are good going to the motor and you're still not getting anything out of it. The next thing you may want to do is check the motor itself to see if you've just got a bad motor. Um, way to do that is just simply connect the leads leading to the motor and pull the motor out. Now this motor here, you can see that there's a lot of carbon on it. That's a pretty good sign that this motor is arcing a lot and may just need to be replaced. Best way to check if the motor is working or not is to go ahead and run power to the motor and see if the motor actually runs for you at all. Um, on a G&G &G, it's very easy to do. You can just simply pull the leads off of your uh, gun where it normally connects to the battery and just run those leads directly to the motor which will allow you to plug it into a battery to see if you're getting power to it. And this may or may not work. You can see here, this motor is not working. So in this case, we have ourselves a bad motor and that's the reason why this gun has failed. All right, so everything that we've gone through today is stuff that I feel fairly confident that people with a you know, minimal amount of tools and experience can do fairly readily and not get themselves into a lot of trouble. Beyond what we've talked about today really involves stripping the gun down to its more basic parts. And if you haven't done this before or you just don't feel comfortable working with that kind of thing, it might be in your best interest to take it to a professional and let them diagnose it from there. Um, but at least you can get through the basic signal flow from going from your battery through the fuse, through the connectors to the motor. And in most cases, I'd say a, a, a fair amount of the time, you will be able to fix the problems on your own. Um, if you want to find out more about this, we'll, we, we will be doing a future video on uh, advanced troubleshooting where we'll actually get into the gearbox and talk about some common issues that go on in there. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. So if you have a gun and it needs repair and you can't seem to figure it out for yourself, bring it on down here to Replay Airsoft. Like I said, we do have a full-time tech that'll be glad to take your gun and get it up and running for you. So until the next time, don't let the bastards get you down.